Okay, today we'll show you how to use a uh, connection string from the web config file. We haven't really talked about the web config much. So what I have here is a week three lab. And I am going to remove, this got in here accidentally, but I'm going to remove this connection string area. So your web config probably looks something like this. Your database is sitting here. Um, what we need to do first is create a new folder. So the idea here, if you look at this form user activity code, we're passing in this right here. And what this is is the actual path to the file in your project. And the problem is, is if you move your project around to different folders, all of a sudden this, is, this will become... Um, invalid when we get into the subsequent weeks when we start using the connection from the web config. Also, it's really not necessary to be passing in um, this information. The, the class itself could get that information directly when it, gets the, when it uh, builds the database connection. So uh, we're going to change how this works, basically. And you don't have to do this. This is recommended because this is how we would do it if we were doing this site in production professionally. If you're planning on being an a, uh, working with ASP.NET professionally as a developer, I recommend that you do this because it, it will be how you will do things in the future. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to create an app data folder. So um, just create new folder here and then we'll select app data. And then I'm going to drag my database into that folder. So my database is now there. I'm going to jump over to form user activity. Now I'm going to add a control to this form and then I'm going to delete it. The only reason I'm adding it is so that I can get the configuration set in the web config file. So I'm going to drag and drop a SQL data source, which is under the data category, onto this form. And I'm going to select configure data source. You'll actually be doing this in the coming weeks, but select new connection, browse to the file that you just drug into the app data folder, test the connection, make sure it works. And then this is where you get to decide what you want to call the connection string in your, um, in your web config. I'm going to leave it defaulted. I'm going to end up deleting all this, so it really doesn't matter how you do this, but if you want to make this exactly correct, we'll switch to table user activity, we'll hit next, we'll hit finish. And then what I'm going to do is delete this SQL data source. So I immediately come back on here and then just delete it. Okay. But what happened is it added to the web config this connection string. And the important point is that it added it in a way that created this data directory alias. And data directory is alias to the local website's app data folder. So now we can manage, if, if we move this project around, it doesn't matter where we move it, it will always find the database because it knows that the database is always in the app data folder. Okay. Now, if you go through those steps again, and create new database connections, you need to use the existing connection. So for example, if I had a lab later on that asked me to create a SQL data source, I would not hit the new connection button here. I would pull this down and I would pick the appropriate connection string. And let me get the right one here, connection string like this. And then that's all we do, and we use the existing one. What you don't want to do is start building up multiple connection string aliases in this file because they all would point to the same place. It doesn't make sense to do that. It's just, it's just additional maintenance that you don't need to do. All right, now with that, what we can do is actually take out this code. So we can remove the code that's passing in the, this, uh, mapping the path, and you'll notice that's going to give us an error. And that's because it's saying it wants us to pass this in. I'm going to remove that. 
and we're going to change this to um, actually create this data source for or this the, the database connection string for us because it's already stored in our web config so all we need to do is retrieve it from the web config and that will put, pick up this connection string value and put it right in for us so that we don't have to write all that code every time again. Example of this that I'm going to pull up. So I'm just going to open another file. So let me grab the. Uh, I'm just going to grab a file from another location here, real quick, that's got a sample in it. And it is this code right here. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is take all of this and replace it with this code. Okay, so um, one thing we need to do is add a using statement, system.configuration. That, that allows us to pull in this information. Let's look at another example here real quick. So there's a property on this called connection string that we need to add. Okay. Now the only other thing we need to make sure we've done is that this alias is prop is correct. So I don't believe that's the right alias. So ours is just called connection string. So I'm going to copy and paste that here. So now what happens is that when it needs a connection, it will go to the web config, get the connection string property, and build it. So that's a lot better than doing it the way we were, where we are passing a path through and then having to worry about that. So what we'll do is just run this page and make sure that everything works the way it's supposed to. And there it's pulling the data from our database as it's supposed to. So again, just to review the steps that we went through, we created an app data folder. We drug the payroll system db acdb file into that folder. Then we changed the. Uh, then we went to the form user activity page, added a SQL data source, configured it to point to that. Then we deleted that control. It's very important that you remember to do that. Delete that control. Then we modified our code that called and took out the map path that it was doing, removed the parameter on the get user activity, and then replaced the new OLEDB connection with this entire piece of code right here. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully you can do that. It'll make, it'll make your life a lot easier as we move through the class to do this. Now, what will happen is, is we add additional code that also, here's, here's another one you, you see here, the save user activity. So we would need to make the same change. So what I'm going to do is make the same change here. So I'm going to grab this entire chunk of code. And down here where we're creating the connection, same thing. We will replace all of that with getting it from the web config. And then we no longer need to pass in the database like this. So we can delete that. And we called that on form main. So you'll notice now it's giving me an error because I removed the parameter, but you can just take this out. It really simplifies your code. It makes us a lot better to do it this way. And we just pass the form through. 
Now I'm going to build the whole website just to make sure that we don't have any issues. So I'm going to set this as the start page. We'll do a rebuild on this. We'll run. So now when form main comes up, it should save the user at the the it should save our access to the form to the uh, user activity table. And then if I go to user activity, I should see that. And here here's that entry right there, 514, 226. Okay. So as we add additional code, you'll need to make that change if you want to use this approach. Now you don't have to do this. It's not required for the lab. It will make things a lot easier and it does line up with what you would do professionally in this. So hopefully this helps you. Thanks.